Hey guys, Mike here from Rust Brothers, as you probably know by now, my buddy Todd from EG Auctions. Michael Mike Hall is a man who went from performing casual physical work to gracing TV screens all around the world, simply because he had a passion that became everyone else's too. The Mayhem Entertainment production company found what Mike had to offer highly intriguing at least, eventually approaching the History Channel with their discovery. Then just like that, Rust Valley Restorers was born, debuting in 2018. The series follows Mike, his friend Avery Schoaf, and occasionally his son Connor Charman Hall, as they travel across the US, gathering cars so old and unusable they're considered common wreckage. The restoration process then gets underway at Mike's Rust Bros Restorations, turning the vehicles from what looks like scrap metal into a veritable ride that can compete with the market's finest. Mike Hall is a well-known name in the world of classic car restorations, the co-owner and head mechanic of Rust Valley Restores and business based in Tappan, British Columbia. Hall has been restoring classic cars since the 1990s, and his work has earned him both regional and worldwide praise. The crux of this entertaining strategy is to spend some money and make a lot more. But these endeavors don't always go as planned. Mike needs to find a buyer for each restored car and not everyone is appreciative of older cars or the amount of work that has to go into them. As a result, sometimes the invested money is lost, which makes Hall's day-to-day -day uncertain, but the show itself significantly more entertaining. This reality TV series has already won 5 awards and been nominated for 5 more taking home five Leo Awards in 2020 in the Best Screenwriting in an Information, Lifestyle, or Reality Series, Best Picture Editing in an Information, Lifestyle, or Reality Series, Best Cinematography in an Info, Lifestyle, or Reality Series, and Best Information, Lifestyle, or Reality Program or Series categories. It won the Leo Award again in the last mentioned category in 2022, being nominated for four others then as well. Hall's passion for classic cars is evident in all of his works. He believes in bringing classic cars back to life with authentic techniques and parts, rather than using modern technology. His team also works hard to preserve the car's history, rather than just restoring it to look new. This approach has earned Hall considerable praise from the classic car community. Also known as Rasta Blasta due to his signature dread hairstyle, Michael Hall was born in St. Boniface, Manitoba, Canada at some point in 1956. After being raised there, he moved to Kamloops in British Columbia for his father's new job at CP Rail. Following his dad's footsteps, the teenager quickly gained an interest in all things mechanical, working on the family car in the garage and learning how other machinery functioned. Mike eventually moved out and started a slope stabilization business called Chimera Springs Rock Works, which he described as something akin to hanging from cliffs and blowing shit up. He restored various rock face sculptures and made sure to create safe environments wherever he took the work. With an eventually inviolable income, Hall found time to relax and dedicate time to his true passion. He would spend weekends looking through old garages, junkyards, and scrapyards, searching for hidden gems he could restore. After several successful projects, Hall moved back to BC and opened Rust Bros Restorations. The shop was used to hoard and sometimes repair muscle cars, which at some point numbered over 400. The TV star initially had no intention of selling any of the cars. It was all a pure passion project. However, he came to the certain realization that made him shift away from just repairing and hoarding. According to theglobeandmail.com, he said, I'll be 62 soon. My dad died at 60. I've seen buddies dying or running into health problems, leaving their families with all kinds of stuff to deal with. What are my wife and kids going to do with 400 cars in a field? As a result of thinking for the long term, in 2016, Hall decided it'd be best to part with everything he had worked for most of his life, offering his 5-acre property in Tappan, BC right off the Trans-Canada Highway for $1.19 million with all the cars and the entire shop included. Frustrated with practically no buyers for a year, Mike upped the ante and increased the price to $1.45 million in 2017, which seemed to reach the right ears. Suddenly, there was a sensational story about an older man from Canada selling a massive piece of land with hundreds of restored cars to boot. Naturally, collectors from all over the world wanted a piece of the pie, and individual car orders began rushing in. 
Several production houses also caught wind of the news, scurrying to conjure up a contract that would secure Mike's story and expertise for whoever they were going to pitch the documentary to. Matt Shuchuk and Tyson Hepburn from Mayhem Entertainment, based in Vancouver, eventually landed the deal, propelling a man at the end of his career into a new life he never expected to have, with worldwide recognition and a loving, dedicated fanbase that has kept up with the series since day one, growing exponentially in the four years of the show running, which seems likely to continue. Not everything is sunshine and roses for the hardworking mechanic in Tappan, though, with numerous financial issues arising all the time. For example, a 1966 Lincoln Continental that Mike wanted to restore for just about $15,000, which ended up costing a lot more for the whole process. The pain is then selling the car for enough money to make an actual profit, as buyers can be scarce, depending on the model. Another such case was his praised Chevelle SS396, which was eventually being sold for only $10,000 a value much lower than Hall's intended $25,000 minimum. The only reason he took the offer was because it would at least let him keep the shop running, which is sometimes the best he can hope for. Mike's son Connor is rarely appreciative of his father's spending habits. For example, criticizing the decision to part with $2,000 worth of metal forming brakes on the aforementioned 1966 Lincoln Continental. It was Hall Jr.'s pressure that the car was eventually sold for such a low price, as he believed it to be the best option they had. Ross the Blast is joined by his longtime friend Avery Shope, who seems to be a whiz on muscle car restoration. Mike said, I call Avery the muscle car moron, but he's unreal working on a car. A 1941 Dodge Power Wagon later in the series he puts together in a week. Shof owns his own restoration shop, which is set to appear in the fifth season of the series, offering a lot more variety to the fans. The episodes generally feature one restoration each, although exceptions happen all the time, as some vehicles take a lot longer to finish. It's usually split between one of Mike's passion projects and then a customer's particular order, with the latter generally being more difficult to accomplish, though at least there's a guarantee of profit in that case. Being generally old-fashioned, Mike never had much of an interest in modern cars to begin with, so almost every vehicle featured in the series boasts an old American build. These are the cars he enjoys working on because they remind him of childhood days when he first fell in love with the automotive world, while brand new machinery does little to seduce him. The question that most audience members ask when viewing any reality TV series is, how much of it is real? With the premise of this particular series being rather simple and straightforward, it doesn't seem that there's room to fake what goes on in front of the cameras. However, that conclusion is shaky at best. Even Mike himself has revealed that not everything in Rust Valley Restores is as it's presented on the TV screen. As per the successful formula of reality television, some elements are overly dramatized or outright fake. He hasn't specified what exactly isn't real, but says that about 90% of the show is genuine. What comes to mind when assuming what might have been fake to attract a larger viewership are perhaps the frequent clashes that Mike, Avery, and Connor engage in throughout the episodes. It's easy to pass a heated argument off as a natural occurrence, provided that the three operate in a high-pressure environment with deadlines and potential financial loss looming over their heads the whole time. Here's the kicker though, as the anxiety still hasn't gone down even with the show faring admirably around the world, and the three becoming richer than ever. It seems that their greatest prize is now the success of a job well done and a fully satisfied customer, rather than the monetary incentive which is a phenomenon that has enveloped the staff of many famous restoration shops across the US and Canada. Whether out of genuine personal reasons or more thanks to the incentivization by the production crew, the trio continues to argue on a daily basis when performing any sort of work, although the hostility is nowhere near high enough to truly damage their bonds. So fans can rest assured that the devoted team of Rust Valley Restorers will remain whole for years to come. Another element that could potentially be fake is the sheer luck that Avery or Mike sometimes seem to have while scouring junkyards for cars that could be actually highly valuable in their restored state, for which collectors would pay exorbitant amounts even in the worst possible shape. Such situations aren't the most common of occurrences in the show, but they still raise suspicions among the more skeptical viewers. 
Still, with no one blowing whistles and negative gossip about the show being at a minimum, questions about the validity of things that happen in Mike's day-to-day -day on the set are rare. As ScreenRant.com reported, Mike keeps everything related to Rust Valley Restores at a long distance from his family's doorstep. The TV icon's wife lives with their dog Minnie on a farm of 26 acres. In spite of just how massive this property is, Paul is strictly forbidden by his better half from bringing any of the cars near it, no matter whether they're rusted junk or shiny collection pieces. Even after the show's fourth and most successful season, Mike is still looking for a wise investor to take over the entire business so that he can retire and be with his wife. However, as everyone's able to tell after over six years of this search, it may take a very long time before this dream materializes. Until then, the Rasta Blasta remains hard at work on the forefront of his lifelong obsession. While Hall himself doesn't really care about social media, his business can be found in several places on the internet, including Instagram. It's mostly maintained by his son, who frequently posts selfies in various stages of his work routine. There are also announcements and teasers to keep the hungry fans on the lookout for more content as the series is in the next stage of production in preparation for season 5. Mike remains as busy as ever doing what he does best, restoring classic cars and vintage cars with his son and best friend. With Avery Schoff now running his own restoration shop as well, a new sense of competition is likely to emerge as the TV series proceeds into 2023. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.